started. Uh, I just want to uh, read this notice here real quick. Uh, this board meeting is being live streamed for the convenience of the public at uh, YouTube, on YouTube. Uh, the public may participate in the public comment and or public hearing portions of the meeting by either personal attendance or by calling the school board meeting public participation phone, uh, phone line. A separate seating area has been set aside for the press and public who are in attendance at the meeting in accordance with social distancing guidelines as provided by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. If calling into the meeting, you should call area code 850-833-3100 or 850-833-5819. The phone lines will be operational beginning at 6 p.m on the night of the board meeting and callers will be transferred into the board meeting during the public comment portion and or public hearing portion of the meeting only in order in the order in which calls are received if you are calling into the meeting to make public comment please be patient as there may be a wait time while being transferred into the meeting mr mcginnis any other housekeeping okay so with that we're going to go to approval of the agenda and I need a motion to approve the agenda and before before mr. we do that uh, we're going to do a voice vote again like we did the other day uh, we'll start with miss Avancheck, then dr. Kelly dr. white are y'all okay with that that's fine okay all right so and I need to yes, the fine. public you might want to remind them that we have three board members okay. participating telephonically okay so uh, thank you mr mcginnis and again uh with the uh, cdc rules and the governor's orders uh we are uh having a meeting through teleconferencing tel uh, through the telephone uh miss Avancheck, dr kelly and dr white are taking that option tonight and mr destin and myself are actually here tonight in the boardroom so uh, with that we'll go ahead and make a motion for approval of the agenda I move we approve the agenda chairman okay thank you a motion by I'll second and a second by dr second. kelly any discussion thank you any discussion okay so let's uh vote if you're in favor uh, how do you vote mr destin yes miss abanchek how do you vote yes dr kelly yes and dr white yes okay and the motion carries five to zero okay so now we're going to move to recognitions and due to COVID-19 public health emergency there will be no personal appearances for recognitions but we will go ahead and do some recognition so Mr. Superintendent all right thank you Mr. Bryant and uh, school board members this is a, a wonderful time uh, I think we've been blessed over the course of this year the number of state champions that we've had here in Okaloosa County or the number of students that have had just uh, amazing accomplishments. And tonight we have four recognitions and we're gonna start with a student from Crestview High School, Cade Kutsaratis. And I will just say just really quickly, I think it's interesting, uh, a lot of us know, uh, know Cade and have watched him grow up in the school system and I can remember when he was at uh, middle school playing football and about a six foot one big old guy and my son wanted to play football that next year and I said there's you're absolutely losing your mind if you're gonna play against kids like that but uh, just a great young man athletically and academically <clears throat> and he's being uh, recognized tonight as the male scholastic winner for the all sports association and this is for the 2020 school year and he's representing Crestview High School Crestview High School senior Cade Kutsaratis is a dual sport athlete a four-year letterman in both football and baseball at the beginning of football season Cade was one of the dandy dozen athletes selected for recognition by Northwest Florida State, excuse me, Northwest Florida Daily News. Cade's fine play on the field last fall resulted in seven Division I football scholarship offers from Georgia Tech, Southern Miss, South Alabama, Cornell, Columbia, Marshall, and Middle Tennessee State. Cade selected Georgia Tech. He was the eighth commitment in Georgia Tech's 2020 signing class. At six foot four inches and 285 pounds, Cade expects to play offensive tackle for the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech is a top tier academic school and Cade has the academic chops to excel. He is currently ranked number two in a senior class of 469 students and he was inducted into the National Honor Society. Cade's combination of athletic and academic achievements 
led to his selection as the high school Heisman winner for Crestview High School. And that's Cade Kutzeratis with uh, an amazing accomplishment. And I can uh, attest, I'd, I've known Cade since he was a little bitty baby, and he wasn't a little bitty baby. <laughs> I can tell you that. So congratulations to Cade. All right, yeah. Mr. Superintendent. It is quite an accomplishment, and, and with the uh, danger of making his father's head swell, <laughs> he, he had a brother preceded him that was quite accomplished too, so uh, their, their father and mother raised very good boys. Right, absolutely. Actually, three of them, and two of them are, one was at University, both of them went to the University of Louisiana Lafayette, and uh, Seth was actually a punter, uh, a reserve punter for the Raging Cajuns. So. All three very smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other any comments from uh, my fellow school board members on the phone? Congratulations! I know his parents are proud. They did a good job. Yes. Congratulations. All right. All right. So the the next two recognitions it deals with uh, archery. And I think uh, our board knows that uh, archery here in Okaloosa County is alive and well. And we do extremely well, not only just here locally, but we do extremely well across the state of Florida. And we have, <clears throat> before us tonight, we have the Meg's Middle School archery team and the Shalimar archery team. Both of them won state, uh, which is an amazing accomplishment. And within the team, at the elementary level, we have Georgia Pierce, who was fourth, uh, excuse me, in the fourth grade category. She won state as a fourth grader, so there, we'll see a lot more of her for years to come. And then at Meg's, we have Emma Turek, who was number two in the state. And if you, one of the things that we will be doing is sending a um, certificates to all the students who are on these teams, but they have a very large Team. So if they're here tonight, they would be filling this room. But I do want to read just a little bit about uh, the archery program. The National Archery in the Schools program is an in-school program aimed at improving educational performance among students in grades 4 through 12. Through this program, students are learning focus, self-control, discipline, patience, and life lessons required to be successful in the classroom and in life. And I don't know about um, you all, but if you've ever tried to uh, fire one of those um, bow and arrows. It's not necessarily uh, an easy thing to do. But just an amazing accomplishment and two state winners, which adds to the numerous uh, teams and individuals that have won state here in Okaloosa County. Mr. Dest. Well, I was just going to say, Chairman, I had the pleasure of attending one of the tournaments, and it is skill-based. And what I really, really enjoyed about it is, is girls seem to be a little bit better than the boys at, <laughs> at this stage they were the champions I just was amazed the way those girls could shoot those bows and arrows so yeah. you know this is a dream for title nine absolutely mr. Vancheck I just want to say that you know archery is really becoming the cool sport to be part of and I'm, I'm glad that um, we're doing so well in in our district and I the, it's not only the middle school, but on the elementary level, too. So I think it's great, and I'm just so glad that these students are doing so well. So congratulations to all the students and to their coaches. Okay. Dr. Kelly. I would just echo that. It's always good to have opportunities for students. I think the more opportunities for students to fit in and have a niche, that leads to not just success athletically, but academically, too. So good for them right. and dr. white since these are your two schools I know you would like to say a few things <laughs> well just like in the case of Cade congratulations are certainly in order for for Cade and these schools and uh, I know that other board members as well as myself have made some contributions to these archery teams in the past and looking forward to doing so again in the future thank you dr. white and now we'll move to item 3.4, Mr. Oh. Superintendent. All right, and last but not least, we have the Niceville High School boys soccer team, who they were the 6A boys mm -hmm. soccer state champions. And uh, just a few um, stats on their team. So Niceville High School boys soccer, they were 25-0-2. Oh, 
so they were undefeated. They scored 102 goals, but only allowed 22 goals. So you think about that ratio. We could have Mr. Horton or Ms. Gallen go ahead and break that ratio out for us, but we'll, <laughs> we'll let them think about it right now. They had 15 shutouts. It was their first undefeated season in school history, fourth time in school history in making it to the Final Four, first time making it to the state finals, and then, of course, uh, the first state championship for the boys' soccer team. And it's just uh, – it was interesting as you watch their role – through the playoffs and into state and just how well they played and how hard they played. Coach Wes Nelson's been um, at Niceville for a good bit of time. He, he's built a very strong program. So congratulations to Coach Nelson. Congratulations to, uh, to Principal Morello. And then congratulations to the Niceville High School boys soccer team. Mr. Destin. I'm, I'm just thrilled to see the Nextel in North Florida when there are so many excellent teams all over the state. Yeah. That's that's just truly amazing. Ms. Okay. Vanchek? Well, I know the competition is across the state is very fierce. So I'm just I'm so proud of these students and their coaches for bringing that championship um, here to Northwest Florida to the Panhandle and Okaloosa County. So congratulations. And Dr. Kelly? I would just say that it was phenomenal watching some of these kids and they are not just athletes but they are academic strong houses too and uh, this team set a lot of firsts I believe not just for their school but for the district and Dr. White yes uh, thank you Mr. Chairman I, I just say as someone who uh, well remembers when we added uh, soccer to uh, high school sports that Okaloosa County has come a long way, and now Niceville High School uh, has had a great success as state champions, and, and just like everyone else said, I, I would just add again, congratulations. And I, too, will like to congratulate the Niceville High School uh, boys soccer team as a parent who had two boys play against Niceville many, many times. and. I don't think we ever won against Niceville, but uh, it was always a, a pleasure to see such a great program and how disciplined the boys were uh, uh, playing soccer. But I know for the community in Niceville, it's just a, another uh, a great thing that's happened. And, uh, you know, we talk about football. Well, this is football in another term. So congratulations to the Eagles. Okay, so we have no visitors, no administrative personnel appointments, and now we are at public comment. 6.1, members of the public desiring to address the school board form MIS 5241, public input and or discussion of agenda items. And do we have anybody? Okay. And we don't have anybody on the phones. So we'll just scoot down to item uh, seven is was for workshop only so now we are at the consent agenda and item 8.1 approval of the consent agenda I'll move approval of the consent agenda chairman okay I have a motion by mr. Lamar Desmond. white and a second Lamar white makes second okay and a second by dr. white uh, any discussion okay so mr. Destin no. how, how do you vote I vote yes. mr. Banchak how do you vote Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White? Yes, thank you. Okay, and the motion carries five to zero to approve the consent. So at this time, we are actually going to recess the meeting and go to public comment or public uh, hearing. And y'all go down the way down to the end there. And we're at 17.1. And this is a public hearing for adoption of a revised job description for school bookkeeper presented by Lee Hale, Assistant Superintendent Human Resources and recommended by the superintendent for approval. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak about this particular item? Okay. Uh, in the spirit of transparency, uh, board members, I will be recusing myself from this vote because my wife is a school bookkeeper. Uh, so uh, with that being said, I need a motion to approve, uh, uh, approve the description of school bookkeeper. I'll move we approve the I revised move. 
job description. Okay. Mr. Destin makes the motion and Ms. Ivanchek, I'm going to give you the second. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? I would just have one point. I, I spoke to Representative HR because this was a pretty, you know, thorough uh, revision of the job description. And they made me aware of the fact that it hadn't really been revised in over 20 years. And uh, the, the new description, I think, is much more uh, fitted to what they do. So it, I think it's uh, something we should all support. Okay. All right. So um, any other discussion? Okay. How do you vote, Mr. Destin? I vote yes. Ms. Ivanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White? Yes. Okay, the motion carries four to zero, and I'm abstained. Okay, so now we'll move back up to uh, item nine, superintendent's human resource recommendations. And uh, school board members, just so you know, Dr. Hale is here if you would uh, like to ask any questions. So 9.1 and 9.2 are informational and 9.3 is the out of field report for the 2019-2020 school year. I need a motion to approve. I move that we approve the out of field report. Okay, Dr. Kelly makes the motion. Do I have I'll a sec second it. Second by Ms. Savanchek. Any discussion? Okay, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? I'll vote yes. Ms. Ivanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, and the motion carries five to zero. So now we're to 9.4 employment separations. I need a motion to approve. I'll, I'll move it. Move to accept. Okay, so uh, Ms. Savanchek, I'll give you that one, and Mr. Destin, I'll give you the second. Okay, so any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Oh, yes. Ms. Savanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries five to zero. 9.5 personnel recommendations. I need a motion to approve 9.5. So moved. Mr. Desta makes the motion. I need a second, please. I'll second. I'll second it. Second, Dr. Kelly. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Abanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. The motion carries five to zero. Nine point six employee transfers. I need a motion to approve. I'll move we approve. Mr. Destin makes a motion. A second, please. I'll second. Dr. White makes a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Savanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, the motion carries five to zero. 9.7, employee suspension. Uh, I need a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Dr. Kelly makes the motion. A second, please. I'll second it. Second, I'll second. second Ms. Savanchek. Any discussion? Okay, here none. Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Savanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries five to zero. 9.8, employee suspension. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Destin makes the motion. I need a second, please. I'll second. Dr. White makes a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Savanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries five to zero. 9.9 .9 employee suspension. I, I need a motion to approve. Move, we approve. Uh, Mr. Destin makes a motion. A second, please. 
I'll second it. I'll second. Second, Miss Avancheck. Any discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Miss Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. The motion carries five to zero. 9.10 reinstatement reimbursement of sick leave due to line of duty illness injury medical examination. I need a motion to approve. I uh, Dr. Kelly makes the motion. A second, please. Yes. I need, I need a second, please. I'll second it. Uh, Ms. Avancheck makes the second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. The motion carries five to zero. 9.11, leave without pay. I need a motion to approve. Move we approve. Mr. Destin makes the motion. A second, please. I'll second it. Second, Ms. Avancheck. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avancheck, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, thank you. The motion carries five to zero. So uh, nothing to be moved to discussion. So we'll go down to 11.1 .1 and Mr. Destin. Chairman, I ask uh, our school board secretary to provide the agenda from this morning's construction program meeting. Hopefully you all have seen it. We have uh, a number of tasks here that we are almost through with. Uh, Niceville High School, I think, is, is done. The security upgrade is progressing well, and, and if, if there's a, a lining, a silver lining in any cloud, it's school's not been in session, so people can get out there and work. Um, Florosa is, is, for all intents and purposes, done. Baker School, we're working on their kitchen, making good progress. The stadium at Choctahatchee is, is nearing completion. Prior, we're working on their kitchen, and we are working on Longwood Elementary. We had two new businesses that we discovered and that we're trying to, to press forward with. One was uh, fixing the cafeteria roof at Kenwood and the other is to do a thorough inspection of Crestview High School Stadium along the lines of what we did at Choctaw to make sure that uh, that stadium is up to snuff. Uh, their construction is similar, although not identical, so we're going to get a very good thorough inspection of that one and, and see if there's any things we need to do on Crestview. So that completes the report. Okay. Ms. Avancheck, do you have anything for Mr. Destin? Uh, Mr. Destin, on the stadium, all of the stadiums will be um, checked out, correct? Yes, they're all inspected now. We've moved to once a year, but the, uh, the stadium at Crestview and the one at, at Choctaw are similar concrete, and those are the ones that we pay special attention to, although we pay attention to all of them. And I believe they're okay. basically the same age, too, aren't yes, they? Yeah. Close to it. Yeah. Dr. Kelly, any questions for Mr. Destin? No, it just looks like a good job. There's a pretty good list there, and it looks like they're handling those pretty speedily. Yeah. And Dr. White, any questions or comments to Mr. Destin? Dr. White, are you still there? Yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Bryant. Okay. Did Just you... a comment of thanks uh, to Mr. Destin for sending the agenda. Um, that was very good. I, I think we he's done that for us before, and uh, that is something relatively new, and it's very, very helpful. And uh, thanks, Mr. Destin, for sending that out to us. You're welcome. I think that'll help everybody understand what we're doing and the direction we're headed. Right. And I echo that too, Dr. White. It has uh, Mr. Destin has done, and his team have done an, an incredible job of getting these uh, projects out. And the communication that is given to us before the meeting definitely helps us uh, see what's going on, so we can uh, tell our tell people in our areas what's uh, how the money's being spent out there on uh, capital improvements. So, thank you, Mr. Destin. 
Okay, so uh, we're going to move down to item 12, information technology seat management contract. And I believe Mr. Mitchell is here, or is Mr. Keith here also? No, Mr. Mitchell is here. Okay, so we're going to move down to 12.1, but Mr. Mitchell is, I know Mr. Mitchell's here, school board members, if you have any questions. Uh, so we're going to go to CACI task order number 2-157, fast track AI phone uh, project at Richburg School. And do you, um, we're going to need a motion to approve this, so I need a motion to approve. I move we approve. Mr. Desta makes a motion. Uh, do I have a second, please? I'll second it. Ms. Avanchak seconds. Uh, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Avanchak, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly? Yes. And Dr. White? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That motion carries five to zero. Mr. McInnes, your business. No report tonight. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chambers, your business. Yes, I think um, on Thursday we gave a kind of a lengthy report from each of the different departments in terms of curriculum, HR, maintenance, transportation, in terms of you know, how we've been dealing with the coronavirus. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. I do want to reiterate, uh, Dr. Kelly mentioned um, this is the month of the military child, and I, I, do, I also want to um, acknowledge that as well. And I think a lot of us know our military kids with the moves that they do nowadays, there's a lot of them. And a lot of our military kids, when they come, it's making new friends, new teams, where do I sit during lunch? But not only that, you know, they're, so they're dealing with all of those worries, but some of times they're also worried, you know, when is my mom or when is my dad going to be home? So just recognizing them. So I appreciate Dr. Kelly um, mentioning that on Thursday. And then this is also Autism Awareness Month as well. And as you know, we have uh, a number of students who are autistic in our school district who do an amazing um, job and just want to just really uh, recognize them as well during this month. And then the last thing I'll do, just kind of reiterating as well what I said on Thursday, just how proud I am of our employees, you know, what they're doing at the schools, but also what they're doing at the district level, our bus drivers to our food service workers. Um, you really get to see the character of folks when you're dealing with something difficult like we are and across the state and nation. But our employees um, have stepped up and they're doing an amazing job and very much appreciate the support of uh, each and every school board member. You all have reached out. You all have offered um, help and assistance and have given help and assistance and very much appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Okay, so school board members, we're going to move to our, our business, so 15.1, and uh, I would like to apologize that I've overlooked this at Thursday's workshop, but we do need to make an appointment, appointments to the Okaloosa County Value Adjustment Board, and currently, uh, Ms. Ivanchek, you are our representative, and Dr. Kelly, you're our alternate, and Anna Crespo was our citizen, but she is no longer uh, going to be able to serve in that capacity, so I did reach out to Michael Carroll, owner of Hub City Smokehouse uh, Barbecue in Crestview, and he is willing to sit in as the citizen appointee for the school board. So I need- um, Mr. Go. Bryant? Yes. Um, I'd like to say that I would be glad to stay in this position okay. um, if the board so chooses to keep me there. Uh, I, I think we're going to be okay with that. So. <laughs> and, Dr. and I'm happy to stay as an alternate, too, if that works for everyone. Okay. And, uh, and Mr. Bryant, I, I would be happy to make the motion to support uh, Mr. Carroll's appointment. Okay. Thank you. So we do have a motion, to, and we're going to make a motion for all, all of our appointees tonight. So uh, Dr. White has made the motion. I need a second, please. I'll second that. Second, Mr. Destin. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, Mr. Destin, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Ivanchek, how do you vote? Yes. Dr. Kelly, how do you vote? Yes. And Dr. White, how do you vote? Yes. And that motion carries five to zero. So we're gonna go to 15.2 and board members uh, announcements and requests. And Mr. Destin, since you are here live and in person, we'll let you start off. Well, I would just ask one question of the attorney. Do we need to renominate Ms. Ivanchak and Dr. Kelly for those positions? 
I was I thought that the chairman clarified that Dr. White's motion was covering all the appointees. Oh, I, yes, I it was. I, I didn't. I wasn't paying but attention. We can okay, confirm for the record for Dr. White to be sure he covered okay. them all. I just want to make sure uh, that's what we wait a second. Uh, I think Dr. White made it for the citizens. So, but I but I said I did. But I I did. I did, Mr. Bryant, but I accepted your suggestion as a friendly amendment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. So that answers your question? Sounds good. Okay. And on the announcement uh, area, I, I just want to reiterate uh, the superintendent and, and thank the, the folks that are working with the district. They are going through a historical struggle and, and doing a very good job of it. Other than that, I don't, I don't have anything tonight, Chairman. Okay. Uh, we'll go backwards here and I'll go with Dr. White. You, would you like to make any comments tonight or request? Yes, Mr. Bryant, I would thank you. And uh, this is just uh, uh, in support of what I read in the newspaper and what the superintendent had to say at the workshop uh, regarding uh, a graduation for uh, our high school seniors. I mean, this is really in a, in a lot of respects been a, a difficult time and in many respects for the kinds of things that go on uh, during the end of the year and also in terms of spring sports and all the kinds of things that uh, we just have not been able to to do or complete and superintendent i'm not really sure what you have in mind but i just wanted to offer that should you choose to have a virtual commencement uh, i've done a little research and uh, as you as i'm sure you already know that's one thing that's being done throughout the country and uh, in fact uh, even at various universities including Purdue so uh, I would just say if that's something they can do uh, and we can muster the technology and the uh, ability to do so uh, I certainly would support you doing that and uh, I, I just wanted to say that because I know it's been a, a difficult thing and, and something that's kind of been hard to work through but uh, you certainly have my support in any endeavor like that. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. And, and, and you had me until you said Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dr. Kelly. Well, I did just want to extend condolences to the Academy's principal, David Smith, and to Director Sansom on the loss of one of their students. I know that's such a terribly difficult thing when you have to deal with the loss of, of anyone, but particularly the loss of life so young in this journey. So just extend condolences to their, the loss of their student. I also, on another note, read with some uh, interest from our Florida School Board Association's bulletin today that uh, the CARES Act, which stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, earmarked 30 million for education stabilization but florida's portion i believe i read it was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 725 million distributed across all of florida and then there was another pot of money for school districts that uh, could deem themselves to be significantly impacted so i'll be watching that closely to see how much of that filters down to our district as I know the superintendent will be too. It would be nice if uh, I looked at that list of ways that those monies could be reimbursements for and up to and including curriculum and technology and other things that have been expended thus far due to the coronavirus. So I thought that might be a hint of some good news there. And then I just want to say a, a word of appreciation for our governor and the Commissioner of Education, who I think are making some of probably the most difficult decisions in their careers, but they do serve as templates for us to follow locally. And again, in appreciation for Mr. Chambers for following those templates for decision-making. I know this is a difficult time to do that, and I think everyone involved deserves kudos for that. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. And that's it. All right, thank you, Dr. Kelly. Ms. Savanchek. Yes, well, um, coming off what uh, Dr. Kelly said about losing a student, even though uh, we are not out there on the streets driving around as much as uh, we have in previous times, just note that those students are out there 
and uh, they're you know the weather's warm so they're out and maybe out in the street and different things so uh, when you are out please be careful and watch out for those those students like any other time when we have um, vacation also wanted to on a positive note and I don't remember if someone brought this up on Thursday but uh, if we did I, I think it re uh, bears repeating that we had our student volunteer of the year Lindsay Laborde at Fulton Beach High School and our adult Mary Wright who is at Edge Elementary um, won those titles for the state and um, these individuals go way beyond uh, what they have to do to uh, help and without volunteers whether it be students or adults we all know that we just couldn't um, continue to do the things we do in our school district and one more shout out with employees we talked a lot about that on Thursday I'm not sure if this this group got mentioned but I was reading uh, something interesting um, about our interpreters uh, that as uh, uh, frustrating as our situation is for those um, students and families who uh, do not have English as their first language is particularly frustrating but our interpreters in, um, in our school district have done a phenomenal job in working with those families and helping them understand the situation and getting the, the needs for their um, students melt so thank you okay. thank you mr van check and i will just close by saying that uh you know under all that we've gone through to be able to put these meetings together we've had people behind the scenes that have worked hard to get the technology part of our school board meeting to where it can be uh, transparent via telephone or where we can have people come speak in public based on all the CDC guidelines and uh, there is so many people in the t uh, that are in IT that deserve a lot of credit and so to all of those folks who are working in IT from Eric Mitchell all the way down uh, thank you very much for all that you are doing to make these school board meetings uh, as normal as we possibly can thank you to our phone operators tonight mrs floyd and mrs crawford for answering the phones and then miss mcgowan who is uh taking the minutes there we appreciate all that they do uh to make again make this meeting as normal as possible so with that being said we'll item 16. yeah i'm going there <laughs> thank you mr mickens and thank you to our school board attorney for keeping me in line. So, <laughs> All right, 16.1, uh, public comment, members of the public uh, desiring to address the school board. Is there anybody here to speak? And we have nobody, okay. So with that, the school board meeting's adjourned.